Our host travels a lot around the world. Right before the expedition, Aziza visited the Maldives. And it might seem nothing can surprise her, however, the first expedition in her native country gave her a lot of emotions. Here everything is new to her, everything is surprising. Previously, Aziza spent most of her time in the city. Now she has discovered Kazakhstan's new, unknown side, she felt the spirit of hiking and romance. In the last episode, we plunged into the history of Issyk Barrows, learned the secrets of the Golden Man at the Issyk Museum, and climbed the Mayule Waterfall. Aziza mastered horseback riding and crossed the stunning Jailao Oikaragai on a horse. And now she's not afraid of anything. Well, almost. Take it away! We are going through tracts and plateaus, passes and plains. The landscape of Amati region is so diverse. Aziza had a good night's sleep in the tent, she even managed to wash her hair and style her hair. And all thanks to the fact that she had Mr. Generator with her. By the way, an indispensable member of the expedition. It helps to wash and dry and recharge the batteries. Now we are ready for new discoveries. Today we'll show you where the best grass grows and where the top grazing land in the area is located. This is the tract Don Jainau. We'll also tell you how to observe the stars at the RC Turgen Observatory. Are you ready? Let's go! How to get from Oi Karagai to Don Jainau? It is easy. Where the road leaves the gorge and the two rivers, Kishi Tugen and Oijelao merge, turn sharply to the southwest. From there, the ascent to Don Jailao begins. You will not miss it. Cattle graze everywhere in the tract. According to travel guides, they graze here from time immemorial. In general, if you see herds, a lot of sun, tall grass, then you are at the right spot. From ancient times, these places were considered as summer pastures. And this is not surprising because the grass here is juicy and tasty. So I don't really rush my horse, and it likes to eat. By looking at it, I also want to eat. Let's go visit locals. Maybe they will feed us. Shepherds bring their herds to Don Jailao in June and get them back in September. At first glance, the work of the shepherd is a complete rest. The sun is shining, birds are singing, sheep are picking grass, an idol. But when the cattle is lost, the shepherd overcomes a distance of 50 kilometers or more on a horse in search of losses. Aziza managed to communicate with one of the local shepherds. I am Shukrat. For many years we have been raising livestock. We grew up in a village in an average family. Parents did the same thing. We continue their work. We have 70 horses, almost 200 cows and about 150 sheep. Shukrat was born and raised in the village, spent a lot of time with his parents in nature. It was interesting for the city girl Aziza to listen to what arguments Shukrat would offer in favor of rural life. Let's hear some. Mostly I live in the village. I like living here because firstly the air is clean and secondly I like to ride a horse. When you get used to rural life you no longer want to live in the city. Because I grew up in an owl, I'm not really into city life. Despite the lack of communication, amenities and other benefits of civilization, it seemed to us that Shukrat is absolutely happy here. 
and despite the fact that the shepherds have welcomed us, it's time for us to move on. By Don Jai Lao. The next destination is a sea plateau. Follow our hashtag across the Central Asia. Asi Plateau is located 100 kilometers from the city of Almaty. Its total length is 350 kilometers. A dirt road and the danger of a rockfall might stop someone, but not us. However, be careful when climbing up here. In the summer, Asi Plateau amazes the imagination with overflow of shades and a riot of colors, since a huge number of various plants are located on its territory. In these places, you can find many amazing landscapes that you want to capture with a camera. Beautiful flowers, bizarre-shaped trees, picturesque skills, moss-covered stones, herds of horses grazing peacefully on the plain spaces, a river with crystal clear water. In winter, the plateau looks like a snowy desert. Everyone who has been here in the winter season feels like drowning in the depth of the blue sky and the pearl dunes of our sea. It feels like you are on another planet. Our sea has an infinite number of little rivers that flow out, merge somewhere there. You can see some mounds. And again, it all changes incredibly depending on the time of the year and the time of day the light of sunset or sunrise. In general, our sea is probably the ideal place to shoot not only photo sets, but also some kind of feature films, because there is a lot of space. And if you are lucky with the weather, it is impossible to live it. So now we are on the RC Turgan Plateau and frankly, it's a little cold here. All because even though it's July now, the temperature here never goes higher than 16 degrees. But overall, this is a very cool place to spend a weekend. In general, I recommend, don't make my mistake, take warm clothes. Do you guys have anything warm? We warned Aziza that she would need both light and warm clothes. At the RC Plateau, the weather changes all the time because the territory includes various climatic zones. In one part of RC, it rains often in the summer, sometimes it can even snow. And in the area of the Batogai Reservoir, it can be very hot. In the sun, the air temperature can reach up to 50 degrees Celsius or higher. Due to its relief, the RC Plateau has great sporting prospects. It is planned to build a ski facility here. There are probably places where you can arrange a ski resort. But here you really need opinion of ski experts, because you can ski not everywhere. There should be an analysis from professional skiers. And overall, why not? The RC Plateau is gigantic. There is enough space for everyone. If this does not violate the infrastructure, and the infrastructure of the resort will not violate the nature, then why not? In general, experts note that Almaty has great potential to become a world-class ski resort. There are three advantages that can contribute to this. These are the natural conditions, the geographical location and the proximity of the mountains to the metropolis. In Western Europe, to get to the ski resort, you need to travel by train for two hours. In Almaty, you can reach the mountains in 30 minutes by car. In addition, the tent shine has little wind, acceptable pressure and a lot of sunny days. Ski tourism is now in fashion. People go on vacation with their whole family. And Almaty has every chance of becoming the new Courchevel. Plus 16 and plus 50, the place of contrast. It is a perfect place for diverse fauna. In winter, wolves, roe deer, bears and even leopards pass here. But in the summer, the surroundings are full of snakes, gophers and groundhogs. Actually, I adore animals and here we already saw a lot of them. Not only is this livestock grazing here at every step and you can watch how the calves communicate with their mothers, 
In addition to this, there are a lot of wild animals. For example, yesterday we rode horses and a huge badger crawled out. For me, it was something like, oh my god, this is a badger. But the coolest ones are marmots. There are so many of them here that it looks more like some kind of marmot land. And they have a very powerful warning system for each other. If one of them is on the mountain and sees that someone is walking, he immediately informs everyone like friends, hide, and they immediately hide in their burrows and will not be found. But it is not only about fauna. Our sea plateau has a great number of images of animals on the rocks. On flat granite stones we see goats, wolves, camels, donkeys, deer and horses. Very similar to the original open-air galleries. What if this is the encrypted message of our ancestors from the depth of centuries? If anyone decrypts, let me know. And now it's time for us to meet with the stars of the RC Togan Observatory. Scientists believe this place is optimal to observe the stars. It is located 75 kilometers east of Almaty, three hours away at the altitude of 2,750 meters above sea level. This is the Assi Tugan Observatory. Now we decided to go up to the Assi Observatory, and together with the expedition members, we decided to use the transport of nomad ancestors. Our SUVs do a good job, but I would trust a track to professionals. Assi to Gan Plateau. Cars and horses go on the serpentine to the observatory. Sounds of engines. Dust of the road. In the past, the semi-nomadic lifestyle of our ancestors, constant hikes and a harsh climate contributed to the creation of valuable Kazakh riding breeds. Horses of these breeds are not afraid of the scorching sun and are hardy in long trips. Specially trained animals are able to overcome difficult mountain crossings. These breeds were selected for the expedition. They are well trained, cautious on mountain trails and they easily overcome ascents and descents. It's very cool. This is not a car just got on and off. This is a friend. This is an animal. This is a soul. Give him something. It's cool if you have some kind of sugar. Or if there is nothing edible or sweet, then you can take a grass to treat him. You are already making this contact. You already have some kind of internal respect. I don't know what can be cooler. The main plus of the expedition horses, they easily obey the will of the rider. Aziza appreciated this and used obedience for personal purposes. Somewhere there I see the dome of the observatory. I sink my teeth into the goal. Let's go. Play along with me. Let's go. Thank you. The construction of the observatory began in 1975 and the first observations began six years later with the Zeiss Meter Telescope. In 2015, the second telescope was launched, which still protects the Kazakh satellites from space debris. Many of us have heard pseudo-scientific theories that something huge will fall on Earth and that will be the end. But I was assured that the chances of this are negligible. But the observations of scientists at the observatory help protect our Kazakh satellites, Kast 3, from space debris. And if they see that something is moving towards them, they report to the Republican Space Communication Center, and there they already change the trajectory of movement. Cool, right? In general, there are three observatories around Almaty, but this, Asid to again, which is nicknamed Chupa Chups, is the most optimal for observing the stars. And all because it has the best astronomical climate. But the installation of the third telescope was suspended due to the collapse of the Soviet Union. AZT-20 was launched only in 2017. But with a grand scale, an 11-story tall telescope can peer into space at a distance of 13 billion light-years. That's the minutes for new knowledge. Do you feel like getting smarter with us?
In general, you can enter the RC Turgan Observatory only with special permission. But they say that soon it will be opened for tourists. But what can I tell you? You need to come here without lights, because even one such small flashlight here can spoil the whole view of the stars. Indeed, let's go without flashlights. Aziza tells the right thing. Light pollution is a phenomenon that threatens all the observatories of the world located near large cities. Scientists from the St. Petersburg Pulkova Observatory in 2015 discovered a nebula at a distance of 2,000 light years from Earth. Now, due to the large number of billboards, streetlights and smog, there is a danger that the nebula will no longer be visible. Illumination leads to the fact that scientists cannot follow the stars and comets directly above the horizon, and a large number of errors appear in other observations. The Almaty Observatory on the Kamensky Plateau faced a similar problem. But the RC Turgen Observatory was the salvation for the astronomers. Here is the perfect astroclimate. Let's take care of it. The guys on the expedition look at the stars, dream of a soft bed and shower, eat peel off in the fresh air and fight off mosquitoes. Camping life is so diverse, but how many unforgettable adventures are yet to come? Each route has places marked as locations with a campsite, and there are passes which we just passed and moved on. The Kazil Awes Pass, or the Red Mouth, lying between the RC and Zhinishke rivers, is that kind of pass. No one was hurt by the ferocious name. Now we are on the Kozilawis Pass at the altitude of 3,030 meters. Somewhere there, there are Korsai Lakes, but so far we have stopped to take a rest. Guess where we are right now? No, this is not the Grand Canyon and not even Charin. We are in the valley of the Zhinishke River. The Zhinishke River originates at the altitude of 3,650 meters in the upper reaches of the eastern spur of the Zailiski Alatau, the Saritau Range. Before flowing into the Chilik River, it flows for more than 50 kilometers in the Intermountain Valley with the same name. This 50-meter canyon was formed due to three factors. The rapid flow of the river, the constant wind, and my wild desire to take a picture against a cool background. By the way, no one has cancelled the tradition of repeating my photo with a hashtag across the Central Asia. Therefore, take a photo, post it on your page, and win a prize. The lucky ones of the last season have already won their prizes, now you should try your luck. And the main thing, do not forget about the hashtag across the Central Asia. What is most striking when you're standing on the banks of the Zhinishke River? Rust among the greens. The sea buckthorn bushes strewn with bright berries are striking. In addition to sea buckthorn, rosehips, aspen and poplar grow along the coast. Plants grow so densely that they form an almost impenetrable jungle. We found a great place to camp. There is a river nearby where you can swim and just look at these beautiful views. And once again, make sure how irresponsible people are. 
I honestly don't understand how you can come to the nature to enjoy it and then leave it all here, all your rubbish, and just leave. Last year, the national company Kazakh Tourism proposed a new concept for the development of tourism called 4E Eco Tourism, Ethno Tourism, Entertainment, and Events. I really want people who litter in the most protected locations of the country to read it, or at least just listen to the words of Aziza. Honestly, this has long ceased to be some kind of tediousness. Now it is a real trend to look after nature, to take care of it, because such an irresponsible attitude can lead us to a real catastrophe. Well, now I will be in a real trend. I'll clean it all up with some amazing people. So good luck to me. The trend that Aziza speaks of is the so-called ecotourism, when you get acquainted with nature but do not do any harm to it. Green tourism has several directions. Scientists travel to explore unknown corners. Extreme lovers, climbers, divers, snowboarders and rafters choose active tourism. Do you like to walk through the woods, swim in the springs, ride horses, then you are in recreational tourism. The historical direction is recommended to people interested in the customs, traditions of peoples. And they also practice this type of recreation when city residents come to the village and learn local crafts, learn to milk cows and mow hay. Только вот в Алматинской области у нас находится пять национальных парков, only in Almaty region we have five national parks that have huge potential for tourism, mountain tourism, horseback riding, hunting and so on. Ecotourism. It seems to me that it is very important for the state to achieve sustainable development. Because first of all, local residents benefit from the sustainable development of tourism. If you want a person to be full, you do not need to give him fish, you need to give him a fishing rod. Now we will give Aziza a fishing rod and she will fish here. If she catches, then she will have dinner. If not, we will watch you Aziza, we will not prompt you. We will be watching you from that mountain. Good, if you don't get anything. It seems that I will not catch anything. Do not give rod to Aziza. Kazakhstan has all types of ecotourism in. Which direction to choose is up to you. The main thing is to understand that the basis of all these activities is care for nature. Aziza is a born leader. She has organized an environmental movement inspired with a speech and went to do new things. And while the cameraman collected garbage, Aziza found the fisherman, fishing rod and codfish for dinner. I have a dinner! Woohoo! What should we do now? It breathes badly. Everything hooked in my sweater. Girl fishing. All you need to make a fire and fry it on a stick. Cool. Right? Oh, it got me dirty! Guys, this is a real mountain Osman fish. And now Aziza will cook it. Arriving here, you feel like you are getting energy. You become healthy and rested, and red stones and large greens are must-have things for the photo. By the way, nobody has cancelled our tradition of repeating my photos in cool locations. Let's summarize the episode. We learned how shepherds live in the summer pastures of our ancestors. Aziza managed to freeze on the high mountain of Kazakhstan, the Asi Plateau, and discovered the previously unknown country of Marmotland. We watched the stars near the Arsitogen Observatory and made breathtaking photos at the canyon in the valley of the Zhinishka River. We are continuing our journey. 
What is next? We do not know, but we are open to everything new, interesting, amazing and unexpected. Let's go with the hashtag across the Central Asia, of course.